Good day, ladies and gentlemen. I have a man, an honourable man, a brave man, a brave soul, in Ukraine, that is going to share with us a lot of insights. This is to expose the magnitude of the lies that's being told to you through the so-called mainstream media, especially the BBC, who are totally and utterly corrupt in everything that they have done. And whatever comes out of these people's mouths are just lies. You cannot even believe if, if they are talking a fact or a lie. So they are completely being dismissed. Anybody paying TV licenses, like in the, U in the UK, as it were, are just paying to be lied. I'm now going to introduce him, uh, introduce you folks to him. And he's not going to show his face because I didn't want him to show his face. And he is going to move around the, he's going to move the camera to let you people know it is a live feed. And he's going to show you the city and he's going to show you the insights of what the Ukraine de facto government is also transmitting as so-called warfare when eyewitnesses, including through um, Sky, Skycam, will reveal that all this is a lie. So, let's hear from the man himself. Hi, Mark. Thank you very much for sharing this with us. And can you just move your camera a little bit just to let the audience know this is not a still image? Yeah, sure can. Okay. Yeah. And what are we looking at at the moment? You're looking at the skyline of Odessa. Odessa your... is a seaport down in the south of uh, Ukraine. Okay. And have you seen any news reports or television reports that there is bombing, shelling, uh, anything of that nature taking place actually happening as the newspapers and the television stations are reporting? That's a big negative. OK, can you talk us through the things that you emailed me about, you know, the warfare, where they're getting these footages from? Yeah, sure. OK, for the first week, you know, I thought this was real. I thought, wow, you know, so it's going to be a big war and I'm, you know, stuck in it. So I spent a lot of time looking at, you know, as everyone else, looking at videos on news and stuff. And yet it wasn't matching, you know, nothing was making sense. Everything was wrong. And I came to realize after one week, it's just all, it's all baloney. Like there's an artillery gun here in Odessa, a big one. And when it fires, you know, it makes a big boom and it shakes my windows. Now, I was in the military, so, and I've fired, you know, mortars and I have course in, you know, principles of artillery. So I know if you fire once with an artillery gun, you cannot hit anything. You have to have a spotter to walk you onto the target. So this artillery gun is firing once per day for about four days in a row. And one shot will not hit anything. So I knew right off something's wrong. You know, they're not trying to hit anything. They're just firing the gun. And I think all this stuff is just to scare people. Because I also get SMSs from the government telling you to, uh, like, don't look out windows. If you see fighting, don't watch them. You're prohibited, actually. It's like you're prohibited from watching anybody fighting and from looking out windows and, you know, things like this. And if you see weapons, don't pick them up, which is contrary to what I saw on uh, news saying that the government was giving out guns and stuff to people. They just actually had an, an SMS saying the opposite. So there's all sorts of, you know, false information out there. Um, in Odessa, it's totally quiet. There has been, as they say, the artillery gun firing. It stopped. Then there's also air raid sirens. Now, here's a good story. I can bear, you know, I vouch for this because I saw it with my own eyes. I was walking down the street Sunday morning and I saw four press guys. You know, they all had press on the back of their jackets and they're just standing there waiting. And it was, and I was thinking to myself, hmm, Sunday morning, four guys from news, something's up. So I was looking around, I saw nothing. So I kept walking. A few minutes later, I heard an air raid siren. This is new, it never went off before. So then there's a big air raid siren, it's really loud. So those fake news guys were just waiting for the siren to go off and then they'll start filming. And I noticed too, the guy, the presenter, is wearing a big flak jacket and a big helmet. So it's looking like it's a war zone, right? Plus with the air raid siren, that's how they're making all this look like a war zone. 
I have people I know in Chernigov, uh, Lugansk, and Kiev. And if you go to Chernigov, like Battle of Chernigov, you'll see burning tanks, epic battles. But actually, the person I know there told me the Russian troops are waiting outside the city, waiting. And like that was for seven days. I haven't contacted her for a while because I know it's fake now. They're just waiting there. There's no battles. There's no fighting. Kiev, there's been some explosions, and they're claimed to be from missiles. But no one there sees missiles or anything in the air which is suspicious. So they could just well be like C4 dynamite being detonated, you know, in different places. And there are gunfire, like I've heard other people say they hear gunfire here and they saw a missile fly by. So there are things being shot off, but whether, you know, there's nobody getting killed or any of the stuff you see on TV. In this part of the world and in the US, it's being reported that this is like a war zone. Yeah. with all the images that you have just said. Now, it sounds like to me they're also not just rehearsing these things for international press. They're also getting the, the, the people within these nations, you know, within the Ukraine, to actually believe that the Russians are coming, the commies are coming, you know, the, the capitalists are coming, the socialists are coming, the boogeyman is coming. You know, how, how far is is my description how accurate is my description i think you're bang on because it's like a fear campaign it's like corona you know like on tv there's all sorts of dead people but in real life there's nothing and it's the same here um people are scared like when i walk down the street i'm always walking around to see what i can see there's nobody around they're all hiding in their house they're afraid some even left the country there's a lot of people they just left like as refugees to romania Moldova, Poland, they're scared. Because they actually believe the newspapers, the televisions and the abject, I would like to say propaganda, but it's a, it's an absurd level of lies upon lies from the government that is so effective that it actually works on the people. It's amazing. People I know, they, they get won't contact me anymore because they're mad at me, because I tried telling them you know, there's nothing going on. Just look outside. And they refuse to believe that or even think about it. They just say, no, it can't all be lies. Mm. So, look, uh, we know that they, through the movies, through movies like Terminator, they got people so frightened as to not, to, uh, uh, not to actually think about or going anywhere near artificial intelligence or cameras and so on and so forth. And yet the cameras that are overlooking uh, Ukraine, the cities, are all saying that there is no conflict because we have the Lyme Im images. And I can qualify that by just showing it to people. This is a live cam, live cam footage. Okay. And you can see people walking about. And uh, that's in, uh, I can't pronounce it, but uh, Kiev, I think. Uh, so that's that bit. And we have, you know, Skynet, which is the Terminator movie, getting people so frightened so they don't actually even go on to Skynet and check for themselves with the international live cams set up everywhere in Washington, D.C., London, Ukraine, Russia, that all this is just rubbish because the BBC will be transmitting in the same place that the cam is looking at, the international webcams, and all they're doing is just providing fake news. That's all. It's all just rehearsed. And that's what they, you know, these people are witnessing. Uh, sorry, big up, pardon. That's what they're witnessing with all of these things. The BBC is reporting this, you know, that there is crisis in Russia. And in a live cam, you can see there is no crisis anywhere. You know, these are things that they can just simply click of a button. They can look anywhere in the world, log in. And you can see that they are lying to uh, people. The point, the point I wanted to make uh, with everybody, you see, in law, we have what is known as eyewitness, an ear witness, you know, a witness to the spirit of things. 
you folks out there, all 91,000 subscribers, and all the people here watching this are witness to a lie. And because of this, you now have more standing in law than the de facto government. That's why I am able to do what I do. And that's why this gentleman is able to do what he's doing, because he knows what his standing is. Look, uh, do you have any more insights uh, that you can share with us? I think it's just a fear campaign. They have an agenda. You know, all these creepy people in our leadership. they got some goal they want to achieve and they need everybody scared in order to do it because it's going to be something very sneaky underhand. What that is, you know, remains to be seen. I have my theory anyway. Okay, would you like to share that theory with us? I think because as you know, in contracts, there's a force majeure clause, which means that includes war. So if you have a contract where you owe money, for example, and if there's war, that debt can be forgiven. Am I correct? Yes, yes. Yeah, all, uh, all contracts are null and void in times of warfare. I suspect because I think Ukraine owes about $56 billion, and I'm guessing that debt will be either you know, uh, forgiven or severely dropped down. I think I understand. So the purpose of war, we know, is to kill people. And here's the, fo here's the lesson, folks. The identical word for kill is also C-U-L-L, -L, which means to cull. So when they say kill in battle, killed in battle, they're saying this man, this woman, this baby, this infant, this child was culled by battle. That means that your own government killed you. Culled. That's when there is too much deer in your field, too many squirrels, too many chickens in your farm, and you kill them to keep the numbers down. That is what kill means. That's why they never use the word murder. You was not murdered in a concentration camp. You was not murdered in a battlefield. They use the word cull to signify to the coroner, because this runs out of the county coroner's offices, to say that this man was culled as part of a culling operation by the county coroner's court, by the government, which are all participants in murder, murder. And that's another thing that they're going to try to escape from. So the gentleman is now going to take his camera out before we lose sunlight, and he's going to show us the city that is in the skyline. So you know, and I know, that he is exactly where he says he is. So please share with us the footage. And as you see, it's pretty quiet. There's no gunfire or any of that baloney. What is that uh, building with the dome on there? That's an embassy. What embassy is that? Uh, like you're starting to come in a little bit. Don't show your face, please. I don't want you to show your face. That, that's fine. So what embassy did you say it was? Cyprus embassy. Cyprus embassy. So people can qualify this by just simply looking up on Google, you know, Ukraine Cyprus embassy, and they can see the shape of it. They can see live footages of it and etc. And also they can log in to these live cams or what's known as uh, sky cam and have a look at these embassies to see and qualify for themselves that this is a true skyline. Okay. That is that. Look, uh, there's a few other things you were saying about how they are using footages from the 2014 to 2006 battle that they had. They're just using those footages also to transmit to the world. Can you explain a little bit more about that? Sure. Now, most people don't know, but between 2014 and now, yeah, in fact, just like a couple of weeks ago, there's been serious artillery firing on Donetsk. And they've, you know, they've leveled a lot of the places in Donetsk. So there's serious battles have been going on there for years and years. And they're just recycling all that stuff. And people don't know because they don't look carefully. They just watch for a few seconds and, you know, they share it with somebody without really looking at it. And 
this is how the lie is built. People aren't careful. They just have a look at something for a few seconds and they're convinced. And once they're convinced, you know, you have a hard time trying to bring them around. So the reactionary population, those ones who are actually convinced, are the ones that are actually spreading the bad news. They're the ones that are contaminating other people with these fake news. So this is like a, a plague. The <laughs> newspapers and televisions are actually a plague. And a plague needs to be taken out. You know, they need to be removed. Rather yeah. than just, you know, like, like a psychological virus. The newspapers, television stations, the BBC, they're actually a plague on man. Well put. Well, th thank you very much. Look, uh, I've, I've got to say, and I'm hoping that everybody can hear you because they sometimes uh, interfere with transmission. I want to thank you for your bravery. You're not the only one that I have as, you know, uh, in Ukraine. There are other people talking to me, but you're the first one that's agreed to speak to me live as eyewitnesses that we are now that the whole world listening to this transmission is also eyewitness and they have a greater standing than any, standing in law than any body in any government position. That's what I want to make clear to them. Yeah, the power is in your hands. The knowledge is in your hands. You need to go and do something about it. You know, use your autograph, use your thumbprint. That carries the entire weight of your family and the generations before it. it your thumbprint, your autograph, quite literally carries the entire weight of your body on this earth, and including your ancestry. Yeah, you need, you folks need to learn to use it. Look, uh, thank you very much. I would very much like you to, you know, end this transmission by saying something to the world because it's you that's putting your your position, as it were. You know, it's you that's doing this. You're the one that's bringing this to the world. What, what do you have to say to the Americans, the Canadians, the Ukrainians, the entire world? I think that people just have to be more responsible. You have to realize that, you know, TV... It's not to help you. It's not your friend. You have to really look at it as just entertainment. And news is entertainment. Not, it's no, no different. So you have to assume everything they show you is just like a movie and take it from there. If you, if you think it's real, you're making a serious mistake. The, the world is a stage, and we know that these people are operating under a theater license. The BBC operates under a theater license. And all newspaper reporters, television crews, all uh, operate under a theater license. Huh. That is why no journalist, no journalist, or any one of these people that have actually taken oath are reporting anything. Only reporters are allowed to report on the theater huh. because it's all fake news. And that's part of theater. A journalist has to have an oath. And if he's not, if his oath is not at hand and he's not under the penalty of perjury, as we are, we are under the penalty of perjury or on a geometric level playing field with penalty, you know, looking at us, as it were, they are just all actors. And the whole thing, as the gentleman said, is a theatre production getting you to believe that it's all real. Thank you very much. You know, you have you have no idea how appreciative I am. My pleasure. And you probably the people here probably want to thank you, you know, in person as it were. <laughs> so guys, write it out, put it in a comment box, you know, let let yourself be known that you appreciate this that you know what this gentleman has done for us is beyond compensation. Yeah. So, uh, thank you very much. I mean, look, if you need any help, give us a call, okay? Thank you very much. It's been a pleasure. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.